here's the thing that I wanted to interject is that people do their best to support me as an entrepreneur. And that means sometimes they're kind of damagingly kind to me because, you know, maybe they like my smile. They like the way I talk to them. They like, you know, the questions that I'm asking and they don't want to be overly critical about an idea that I have. And so they will lie to me. Um, now, here's another lesser known thing about Dan is sometimes I miss social cues. Sometimes I will miss when somebody's actually giving me the answer uh, be, for, for a, a bunch of different reasons. The, the thing is, what I try to do the most is I try to remove me as the investigator altogether so that I can't contaminate any kind of results that I'm getting from a person. And the next question is, well, dude, how do you do that? Because if you're there and you're asking questions, like how do you actually observe somebody in the wild when you're actually talking to them? I mean, that's that's kind of like biased by design, right? And the idea that I have learned is by asking people this while watching for that. And I think that is what the mom test is all about. The the idea behind the mom test is this, like you go into a restaurant and uh, you know you have this like thoroughly mediocre meal. Like it's not terrible. It's not like you can, you're not sending it back, right? But it's not good. It's just like, yeah, right? You know, like chain food, right? That kind of thing. Um, and at the end of the day, the waiter, the waitress, you know, comes up to your table and, and you know, he says, uh, so how was everything? And almost all of you out there are going to respond, it was good, right? And there's two th really important things to note about that interaction, right? One is that we know that he doesn't care. Right, he's, he's like waiting uh -huh. tables. He's got a job to do. We know he doesn't care if you really enjoyed um, the the food. Asterisk, asterisk, right? But like, but we know that, and yet we're not willing to say that the food is mediocre because it's awkward. It's weird. It feels rude, right? We don't want to tell people things that they don't want to hear. Translate that oh, that same situation over to you out there talking about your startup and you go up to somebody and you say, "I'm working on this idea, and I think it's you know blah 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 blah." What do you think about it? They know you care and we're not going to tell the truth to, to you or we're going to find soft ways of saying it. We're going to go, you know, kind of go around it, beat around the bush a little bit. You're not going to get really valuable data. So the idea behind the mom test is that you want to be able to ask questions that even if you asked your own mother, she'd have no choice but to tell you the truth, right? So you can't go up and say, hey, mom, you like my startup idea? Because mom's going to say, oh, yes, honey, I love it. It's such a great idea. You're going to be so successful out there, right? Instead, you want to ask um, questions that even she's going to tell you the truth to. Oftentimes, that's things like, tell me about a time when, right? Or when was the last time that? Or how often do you, right? She's not going to lie to those questions because you're just asking for data, Right. And so that's the mom test. You want to ask those kinds of questions because you're going to be able to avoid a lot of the biases that come with that kind of thing. You're getting real, real data, you know, behind the scenes. OK, so there's one question that I always like to ask after that about, like, tell me about a time when. Hey, mom, tell me about a time the last time that uh, you went to the cookbook and there was a page missing. Didn't that suck? Or what what like how did that throw off your plans and so we're getting people to tell us objectively what occurred now inevitably what happens because you know interviews are lightweight interrogations and as far as i'm concerned they're, they're compassionate interrogations that's how i'd like to think about them uh, because i'm eventually going to use that information to help those folks right um what i want to do is i want to look for those emotional cues as people are telling their stories and then that's when the, for me anyways, this is when the magic happens. This is when the nuggets come out. It's like, hey, wait a minute. I noticed that while you're telling your story, like there was a pain point back there. Like this, not only like you couldn't reference the recipe in the cookbook because the page was torn out, but it threw off the rest of your plans. And tell me about why that threw off your plans. And then mom's going to tell me, well, you know, we had these people coming over and I didn't know what was going to happen. I, well, why was that an issue for you, mom? Well, because like, you know, I'm supposed to be this person, I'm supposed to be that person, and I'm not going to be able to be that person because there's a page missing in my cookbook, right? That kind of thing. So really what I get to do is I get to use those, those stories that people are telling me about their actual things to locate and zero in on those emotions that they're experiencing at that time. And I think JDM may agree with me is that <laughs> once... Once we know 
you know, the functional problem that somebody's having, and we match that with the emotional component of the problem, that, that is the magic. That is what creates that irresistible, that offer, or, you know, if, if we can create.